Well, hello and welcome to another Unscripted Surgical with your host, Dr. Richard Farnham. Uh, today, we are continuing our regenerative medicine journey. We find ourselves in Seattle, Washington. And today, we're going to learn about another uh, type of uh, treatment for chronic pain. Uh, this is uh, what's called PRP, or platelet-rich plasma. Uh, this is an injection that is derived from uh, the individual to whom it is used to treat. So your blood is drawn, it is centrifuged down, the platelets are extracted, and then it's injected. This can be done in many ways. Today, we're going to specifically talk about uh, injections for uh, joint pain, chronic uh, pain, specifically the shoulder. Uh, we're going to uh, first talk with Dr. Lucy Hostetter here in um Seattle at Seattle Regenerative Medicine, and then we're going to actually watch a procedure, so it'll be exciting. Stay tuned. Today I'm here in Seattle uh, with Dr. Lucy Hostetter. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about uh, platelet rich plasma injection, and uh, I will actually be undergoing the procedure today. So, uh, Lucy. Tell us a little bit about your background, what your interest okay. in this area, and what we're going to be doing today. Good. So um, I'm a fellowship trained certified um, anesthesiologist that opened Seattle Regenerative Medicine Center two years ago, hmm. and it is a practice devoted to alternative treatments and innovative treatments for pain, primarily orthopedic conditions like osteoarthritis and tendinosis or tendon tears. So um, Dr. Farnham came to me because he has some issues with his rotator cuff on the left side. And in evaluation, I found evidence of tendinosis uh, involving the supraspinatus tendon, which is really probably one of the most frequent tendons involved in rotator cuff pathology. He also has some history of infraspinatus tendinosis as well. So the plan today is to do both a PRP injection of both the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus tendons to help treat his chronic inflammation. So we're gonna do a, a simple blood draw, about 60 milliliters of blood, and we spin that down. We do a double spin, and the first spin is to get rid of the red blood cells, which have no healing properties whatsoever. They drop out, we collect the plasma, which has the platelets and leukocytes in it, and we spin that down a second time to um, make those platelets drop out, get rid of most of the plasma, and then reconstitute the cells in a small volume of plasma, and that's what is platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. And so from that 60 cc blood draw, how much actual volume do we get of platelets? So I um, get typically about five, six cc's out of that. So it's okay. a good tenfold concentration in platelets that occurs. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm excited to get started. Excellent. Yeah, it's um, the, there, it's funny because there's just there's so many people out there saying like orthopedic surgeons saying this stuff doesn't work. Right. Yet they they know darn well that steroids are bad for tendons and yep. cartilage. Yep. And this actually does work. That's why so many orthopedic surgeons are doing PRP now. Yep. And there's really you know disadvantage to stem cells. Um, compared to PRP and potential huge advantage. I get a lot of patients, when it, if you were coming to me with arthritis, mm -hmm. I would have steered you towards stem cells. Okay. But um, with tendon injuries, often PRP is sufficient. And if you end up feeling like, hey, I want to try stem cells, well, okay, at least now you've got some context. You know what kind of response you've got with PRP. Yeah. I do see when it comes to arthritis, a more robust response with uh, stem cells, so that that often is the way people end up going. But with tendons, you can often really cut it when you're. Well, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of this is driven by t the patient demand, right? So the patient yes. doesn't want to undergo a painful thing; they want the not painful thing because of immediate relief, right? right? So right. that's they're all, and for that reason. Um, yes. And then in our culture, it's you know magnified, right? Um, Everybody wants the quick fix. So. Right, exactly. That's exactly it. Yes, so, it already. Today we have okay. Rick Farnham. Has no known allergies. Is here for a left shoulder PRP injection. 
Look at that right there. You got a here so, even intrasubstance kind of uh, either fluid collection or partial tear. Yeah, this is tendinosis. Yeah, is that still uh, supraspinatus? This is supraspinatus. Yeah. yeah. So could that be an old, an old it, Absolutely. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna do just so you know six cc's. I'm gonna give them lots in both. I'm gonna give you a little numbing medicine here, okay? Mm -hmm. Two minutes. One, two, three. Yeah. So um, most of the knees have had hyaluronic acid, steroid, and they um, have been told they're bone on bone, and they just have to have surgery, and they so, don't want that. I get most of my tendons, my mm -hmm. rotator cuffs, mm -hmm. are primary. They okay. haven't had injections. But the um, the orthopods go pretty quickly these days to the uh, steroid and hyaluronic acid. The hyaluronic acid used to be covered by sh insurance yeah. and now isn't anymore because no data showed that it really improved outcomes. No. Patients end up, it costs a thousand bucks just for the hyaluronic acid. Jeez. So um, insurances were paying a ton of money, and all it did is make patients feel better, but they still ended up needing total knees because it, it basically lubricates and that's it. Uh, so it didn't change outcomes, basically placebo effect, or maybe something was happening. No, but... Yeah, it's, it's real, it just okay. has no healing effect. So uh, it lubricates the joint for six months. It's an oil change. But it's an oil change, but people still have osteoarthritis yeah. that progresses during those six months did nothing about inflammation or any of that, Doesn't right? So condition. just lubricated. Okay. As where PRP and stem cells do actually significantly alter inflammation. So is the only way to harvest the stem cells for the injection of bone marrow biopsy? No, they, um, there are a lot of people out there who do it, get it from fat. The problem with cord blood and amnio is the way it's processed at this time. It's actually really good treatment for growth factors, cytokines. It's got a lot of rich anti-inflammatory properties, but it actually, because of the way they process it, really probably has very little stem cell, viable stem cell left in it. Oh, that's the... Uh, yeah, so look how clear your plasma is in the end. Is, is that a uh, Chardonnay? What is right, that? I know, right? <laughs> that's pretty nice. What'd you drink last night? <laughs> <laughs> so your platelets were on the bottom there. She's going to take off almost all of that plasma and leave me about six milliliters, and that's what I'm going to reconstitute those platelets in, oh, wow. and then that will get injected mm -hmm. into... Half of it will go into your supraspinatus area, and half will go in to your um, infraspinatus. So in, it's interesting, I mean, there's, there are people doing, you know, PRP and like regenerative gynecology stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, I don't, that seems pretty pioneering. I don't right. know if there's any, I mean, I haven't seen any data on it. No, I know there was a lot of interest in, um, yeah, in, um, hang on one second. Got it. So I'm just mixing up, mixing it up, getting the cells back mixed in. So it ends up being sort of a tequila sunrise. Okay. <laughs> Keeping with the, uh, yes. the theme there. <laughs> um, there was a lot of interest for like Eurogyne. Yeah. There, so there's a, again, there's a proprietary, like an O shot, you know, yes. type of thing that people are doing. Yes. Uh, I've known patients who've had it and said mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. I'm mm -hmm. not doing it um, mm -hmm. because I, you know, I really do like to see the data. I have to be honest. I like, I mean, I, I, there's a lot about this clinic that's um, innovative. And so I'm going to start going here. Mm -hmm. Okay. This yeah. may be a bit uncomfortable um, and new and there's not extensive data on it, but I at least like to think that I'm practicing in the, even in this innovative field, some degree of, um, evidence-based. This may hurt here. Yeah. You want to record the needle? Sure. Can you point the needle? Can you point the needle? Okay, I'm going to start injecting. Mm -hmm. How is that feeling? It's tight in there for me. Mm -hmm. You feel it, I bet. Yeah, I'm aware that you're doing terrible things to me. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and go right along this bursa here 
but this can sometimes be a bit uncomfortable as well. Mm -hmm. See how I peel okay. out that verse up? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll come down and do interest by notice. We're almost done with the torture. Mm -hmm. So what I want for this is just yeah. let your arm oh. roll forward. Yes, that opens. Oh. Beautiful. That was the oh. perfect position. See, I could teach a class. Yes. <laughs> it's like uh, this old movie Roadhouse and Patrick Swayze comes in and she's got to stitch him up. And she's like, you want anesthetic? He's like, I don't need it. She's like, what do you mean? He's like, pain don't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so most of my patients would disagree. With yes, exactly. <laughs> Not saying I'm Patrick Swayze. Either. Yeah. <laughs> needle. There we go. Of course. You can pop in there. I'm going to push on you a bit here. Yep. I'm going to take another shot. You still doing okay, Rick? Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, it's I'm going to needle you a bunch here. I'm at a really steep angle, so we won't mm -hmm. see the needle as well here. Mm -hmm. Who's driving that ultrasound up to? <laughs> Just see the tissue movement there? Mm -hmm. And there we go, right into that tendon. It's filling up. You see that mm -hmm. movement right down yeah. there? Yep. And that's it. We're all done. Wow. That you was, handled that uh, very well. Not bad at all. Oh, good. So it went really well. I had had some exacerbations of the pain that were really bad from time to time. But the baseline was kind of just like there, kind of bothersome. Uh, to the point where it's so much better that now my right side, I, it, like my left side is doing so well that I feel like I have a problem with the right side. I didn't even know I had, and now I want to get that one treated. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, that's, you know, sometimes when you cover up, when you take care of the loud pain, yeah. you realize there was this quieter pain you weren't even aware of. Good. You're still so early. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like been a week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, so, I'm not going to lie. The first day was rough. <laughs> yeah. Was it, how was it doing your dinner that night? It was fine. I mean, I just, um, it was sore, like trying to pick up my left arm above my head and stuff, but, um. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too bad. It's often four to six weeks before people notice, so it's great to see this early response. You know, the question will be how much of it was supraspinatus, how much of it was infraspinatus, yeah. right? Because I did inject both, but, it, you know, the, the point is you're better. So I injected something yeah. in the right spot. Something worked. I saw <laughs> so, it on the screen. I saw, I saw the bubble, you know? Right. So... Yeah, so the, the my patients that actually really embrace physical therapy do best long term. All right, so and I think I'll be more likely to do physical therapy if it's twice a week instead of every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody can do it every day, really. Yeah. So anyone who says they are is lying. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that if I tell you twice a week, maybe I'll get lucky and you'll do it once a week. That's so. true. That's exactly right. <laughs> Perfect. All right, John. Well, great right, to talk to you. It. You bet. Bye. All right, take care. Bye-bye.